All right, thanks everybody for joining us. We uh, now have with us Olympic gold medalist, world champion Simone Manuel. Um, Simone this week will be swimming the 50, 100, and 200 freestyle. Um, we'll start it off with a question to Simone. Simone, uh, obviously this has been a, a big year for you, um, kind of wrapping up your, your collegiate career and moving on uh, to the professional ranks. And from the looks of your shirt, it looks like you might have uh, some news to share. Yes, I am so excited and so thrilled to be a part of Team Tier and such a great team that excels so well in competitive swimming and they have really supported me and I'm really excited to be a part of their team. All right, go ahead and open it up to questions. Please raise your hand. Uh, Melissa will get you a microphone and we'll go from there. Hi, Simone. Nathan Fennell with the LA Times. There's been a, obviously a lot of coverage this year about the uh, USA Gymnastics sexual abuse scandal. I'm curious how you think USA Swimming has handled that issue as it's become more of a, something that's just talked about more in our culture. I think um, USA Swimming has handled it well, but since it's, it's such a huge topic, I think we all have a lot more work to do on it. Um, and just understanding what safe sport um, represents and just all being aware of what has been going on and really trying to make the situations better and making the survivors feel better about the situations that they've been a part of. Coleman. Can you just tell us a little bit more about the decision to sign with Tier and kind of what went into that decision for you? A lot of it went into, a lot went into my decision. Um, I really wanted to choose a company that was in line with some of the missions that I have as a professional swimmer in and out of the pool. And Tier really supported me throughout that. And um, I just know that it's the best decision for me. Was it significant to you at all that um, you are now suit teammates with your Stanford teammates, Leah and Katie? That definitely was a driving force and just talking to them and how much they appreciate Tier and what Tier has done for them and how comfortable they feel competing in the suits. Um, and I was just talking to Team Tier about some of the cool equipment I've seen them walk in with pra in practice to and how kind of jealous I was of it. So <laughs> I'm really excited to kind of get that gear and um, progress in the pool with Team Tier. You mentioned TIER uh, aligns with some of your missions. What are those specific missions? Yes, so within TIER, we have implemented the Inclusion Rider, which talks about serving underrepresented communities within the business and making sure that those underrepresented people feel included and are a part of the production process. And I think that's really important to me as I kind of stand as a advocate for change and representing and being a representative in the sport of swimming. Dick again. I want to ask um, how, how it works with you and Greg in terms of goal setting. We always hear about swimmers in goal setting. What are the circumstances around which you set your goals with Greg? Is it the start of every year or every season? Are you writing down times or, or places you want to get? How is that done with Greg? With Greg and my other coach, Tracy Dukach, we talk a lot about the process of getting faster, and it's not always times. I think there are a lot of aspects in my race that I need to work on to get better. Um, and so we really focus a lot on those aspects of my swimming, and the time will come. Um, I don't talk about times too much. Uh, they're, they kind of make me a little nervous, but because <laughs> I'm always very um, critical about my time. So a lot of it for me is focusing on the process of just getting faster. Um, this year? <laughs> just at the beginning of the year, I always have goal setting meetings with them. I meet with them and we meet with each other whenever we feel like it's important for us to kind of sit down and refocus. Beth. Beth Harris, AP. Uh, Simone, when you mentioned that production process, what specifically are you referring to? 
just diversity into creating suits and competition suits and gear, um, just more diversity in how we are producing products for tier. And also kind of who's doing that work? Um, it, women, gender, race, LGBTQ, um, sexual orientation, and, and the other. So it really goes beyond just wearing the products. You want to be able to have a hand in who's making them and who's... Correct. Yeah. Um, I'm wondering, too, uh, what was your reaction to the um, sanction that was handed down against Ryan yesterday? Yeah, I mean, it's really difficult um, and really unfortunate that Ryan has to deal with that, but I believe in clean sport, and those are the consequences that any athlete has to face if they fail the drug test. Um, but it's very unfortunate, but I know that he will be back. Any other questions? Simone, one of the big stories down here this weekend is going to be the heat. And while it's not going to affect you while you're in the pool, how do, will you deal with it just getting around the venue and dealing with the weather outside of the pool? I think as an athlete, you kind of just have to take control of what you can control, and that's just continuing to prepare for your race the same way that you would prepare for your race if you were in air conditioning. Um, you still have to hydrate, you still have to stretch, you still have to warm up and warm down the way that you're supposed to, and um, we'll just try to find shade as much as we can and get out of the heat when we can. Beth. Yeah, when uh, Nathan came in here, he talked a little bit about Ryan, obviously, and um, he kind of uh, had the opinion that, you know, USADA is, is taking a very hard line with American athletes and maybe some other countries are more into protecting their athletes versus governing the sport. Sort of wondering what your take on that is. I think I would have to agree with Nathan. I think that you, the USA athletes do kind of have harsher um, terms for when they do have incidents like these. Um, and as an athlete who is in the drug testing pool and is updating my whereabouts daily, it is very difficult. And we do have a lot of responsibilities, but we also are human. And just me kind of going to the grocery store for an hour and forgetting to update could cause me to have a failed drug test. And I think it's kind of difficult when us U.S. athletes feel so stressed at times about it when we know that other countries are doing this and they don't receive as harsh stipulations that we may face. Coleman. Um, can you tell us about your pet snails? <laughs> um, so I have two pet snails, uh, Shaka and Zulu, and <laughs> I found them on a walk and just pick them up, and I've kept them ever since. Um, I don't know, they're pretty interesting. I've learned a lot about snails from them and Googling like why they do certain things, and they kind of taught me to slow things down when they come out their shells. I watch them. Um, <laughs> I don't know, it's weird talking about it now, but uh, yeah, I have two pet snails. So, so kind of to build off of that, um, it seems like you have a pretty active social media presence with, um, you know, personally I follow you on Instagram. And, mm -hmm. You know, you, you'll, you'll cook on your story. Um, you know, you posted about your snails the other day. Um, do, do you think about that now that you are a professional swimmer, just kind of building that brand of you and kind of um, how you want to represent yourself? Yeah, I mean, I definitely think I had a social media presence before turning professional, but... Now being professional, I do recognize its importance and I also want to be more engaged with my fans and people who are interested in my life. And um, I think it's kind of important to share the things that make me me. Um, and cooking's really important to me. I'm kind of quirky and nerdy. I don't really like nature, so I'm not sure why I picked up the snails that day. But I just kind of want people to be more involved and really interact with them and have, let them have a better understanding of who I am outside of the water. You mentioned with the snails, it sort of reminded you just to kind of slow down a little bit. Is that something you kind of have to focus on just to, okay, take it slow, day by day, big picture, don't get too hasty about things? It definitely is. I think 
with professional life, I've had to learn that a lot, even though I've only dealt with it for a couple of months. But there are a lot of things that I now have to do and a lot of obligations that I have to take care of. And just kind of reminding myself to slow down and kind of have a sense of peace is really important to me. I think that's probably going to help me have a long career in the sport of swimming with as little stress as possible. <laughs> What are some specific ways you try and like keep that stress down on a on a daily on a, excuse me a daily or a weekly basis? A lot of that for me would have to be just swimming stays at the pool. Um, that's really important to me. Once I'm done with practice, if I have a good practice or a bad practice, I kind of leave it there. And I hang out with my friends. I cook. I now take care of my pet snails and um, just watch movies, shopping, all the things that make me happy and fill up my tank. Does this mean you would never eat snails? I would never eat snails even if I didn't have pet snails. <laughs> Nick. Uh, more snails, buddies. Can you spell their names and is there a reason behind the names that you picked? Uh, I didn't pick the names. <laughs> uh, my boyfriend picked the names. But uh, the names Shaka, S-H-A-K-A, -A, and Zulu is Z-U-L-U. -U. <laughs> On that note, anybody else? <laughs> My snails got more press than me. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Thanks, everybody. Thank you, Simone.